It's been one heck of a week. <laughs> not because I had so much to do, but because I could not do it in one or two goes as I normally used to do. Unfortunately, I could not prepare the indoor grow space as meticulously as I would have liked. Moving the racks was physically impossible, but I did the best I could to clean it up and be ready for the orchids to come inside. At least keeping it tidy now is not as demanding. The major part of what I needed to do was outside on the patio, so I'll give you a recap of what needed to be done there and what I have not gotten around to do. Usually I film a video as I go about my business. However, the physical demand was such that I could also not deal with different things I needed to do in one go. So here's a little recap and I hope you enjoy seeing the mundane chores before and after. First of all, the west side fence foliage needed dealing with. I had to take it easy in October. I could not keep up with the sporadic tidy as much as I normally do. So this got out of hand. It took me several days to cut back what was reaching into the patio and carry the debris to the skip. At least the days were sunny and thankfully there was no wind. Happy to say that. <laughs> While I taxed my pain threshold, I was happy with the result. I also took a cutting from one of the Schefflera that grew massive branches towards the Chow Praia and stuck it in a pot just to see if it will root in. Might as well give it a go, but I already forgot to water it several days in a row, so I'm not doing very well there. We shall see. Por que no? Give it a go. Then I had to tackle the deep south, gave that a little broom broom action. Nothing too detailed, but all the bits and pieces that fell from cutting the foliage above. I don't want that in the pots. I also treated all the orchids in this area for pests, just in case something was in what I cut away and had fallen on these orchids. Also, my Vanda No ID biology experiment was interrupted. <laughs> I changed the water and refreshed the fertilizer concentration. <laughs> Took some pics for you to see how the roots are doing or not doing. The orchid is growing roots, but painfully slow, even if it is in permanent water. Still, here she is and I shall keep going with her until I win her over or she has had enough. While I did not have any wind making cleaning the west side hedge more difficult, a couple of days before that the winds of change blew through the patio and we had a three hour windstorm that took out my patio curtains. <laughs> okay, granted, they were a little tired at the beginning of the glam camping season, but that was one massive violent windstorm that took them out completely. Now they looked really unacceptable and not even fit for purpose anymore. So get the stepladder out, cut them down. Thankfully a nice day followed and I could leave the trellises without having to worry about sunburn on the orchids as well as add a day of rest in between before taking out the new curtains up the ladder again and fasten them to the trellis. I am hopeful that they will last for another two years, if not three, the way the other ones did. Having replaced the new curtains gave the area a massive visual upgrade and I love it. A really easy part was I moved my Dendrobium nobilis from their summer location to their winter location, leaving me with this nasty biology experiment. <laughs> hey, just keeping it real here. <laughs> anyway, that tray is now indoors, cleaned up and ready for whatever may come next where I will need it. As the forecast started to show low night temperatures for the orchid top orchids, I did a lot of weeding before bringing them inside. The floor of the patio is still a mess and I will say that it will be a mess for a while until I'm done with the really important things. <laughs> but there were a lot of weeds in the orchid top pots that I do not need to carry over through the winter. Then the east side rack was emptied for the first time of low night temperatures. Stan the man will stay where he is. I have a heavy duty towel for him this winter, hoping that I can keep him safe from cold nights this time by covering him up. By the way, I have found three more growths coming. He's clocking in with 28 new growths and I'm hoping 29 because I can see one new growth that I'm not sure if it wants to progress or not or if it's going to fail. But yes, we are at 28 new growths at the time of filming. 
Some of the orchids from the east side went into the blooming alley, while all the little pots were moved indoors on that first night. This was on the day that I did not replace the curtains yet, and these highlight orchids were just fine without any protection from the sun. It was a nice, fresh look for a little while. Another look at the patio floor with all the hibiki blooms. It looks like a wedding came through the patio, and flower petals remain where they fell after being showered over the bride and groom. I took them off because I want my hibiki to rest and grow proper sized growths eventually again. The challenge is always to get some growths to grow to size during the winter, so maybe by cutting the blooms off prematurely I will achieve that. Time will tell. Then one of the things I never look forward to is moving the east side rack to the west side because of how the sun behaves this time of year. Here you can see Stan the man with his towel and the angle of the sun and the strength or lack thereof at the same time as how it hits the west side. Same time of day, and the ancelias are in full sun, as are the lower shelves where I start to place orchids during the winter. While this looks nice now and it is practical, I can assure you that come December through February, it's going to be a dance between matching indoor and outdoor temperatures before I can move orchids. Right now, it's not so bad, but I have that dread in me already. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I will link a video in the description. That's called My Conditions. In that video, I go into much more detail about my winter conditions. So after this video, if you would like to be in the know, take a moment and check that video out. And by the way, if you're new to my channel, welcome and welcome everybody that has clicked on this video. I just went right in. I didn't even say hi. My apologies. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your time. And I would appreciate it very much if you would also give this video a like. And while we're at it and you're new here on the channel, please Please subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. That would also help tremendously. I am heading into a season that is topsy-turvy for me and the orchids, and all the support I can get is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. Speaking of moving orchids, I have not moved my angrecoids yet. I have had some low night temperatures for a stint, but they were followed by acceptable night temperatures. And seeing as these orchids are not going to get the light they love until at least mid or end April, I am dragging out their outdoor time for as long as possible. And I'm covering them with my snuggle blanket in the meantime. <laughs> I hope I'm going to get away with this, even if I lose the spike. I want them to get the light because once I pull them out, that is it. They don't move in and out as many other orchids do, so fingers crossed. This is what my indoor grow space looked like on the second night when I brought the top guns in. It was a slightly overcast day. The orchids on the left had already been inside for a week prior to the big ones coming in but I could not move them. You see, while I was doing things outdoors, I could not also move orchids, so they had no real light for a week when I took this image. But then finally the heavy lifting was done and this is what the rat looks like at the moment with the smaller orchid pots finally getting some light. While Stan the man is left behind with only the Dendrobium nobilis to keep him company. But I visit him often. I feel so bad for him, so I go say hi a lot and tuck him in at night. I hope he knows he has not been abandoned. The status quo on the east side. Mid-afternoon. While the nobilis have been in full sun all morning, Stan the man has to have his towel around him also because full sun this time of year is a little bit harsh. But let's go to the west side, seeing as that is what this week's recap is all about. See the difference? <laughs> Off the screen on top are the Ancelia Africanas, and then you can see the gaggle of orchids that I have out here for the time being. I still have to protect a little bit the hanging baskets of the loose sneeries and my rainbow forest because today was quite a warm day and the sun beating on them, including the reflection of the white facade, I really don't want to say, yeah, it'll be fine and then risk burning them. But yeah, so it is all set, all ready to go for the winter. I am not, but the orchids are. 
I hope that you enjoyed this video. Very short little recap of what has been going on. Not the usual standard way I do things, but at least I wanted to document this for anyone who does not know what has to happen on the patio as we move into winter. I really appreciate the time you took to watch the video. Thank you so, so much. The support is greatly appreciated. Once again, if you don't mind, just give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Know that I wish you a beautiful day but know that I attach a condition to that and that is that you please stay safe. I look forward to seeing you in the next video you choose to watch. Take care. Bye. I'm coming. And that is me to Siliano. <laughs> Bye.